In today's tutorial, I will show you how to generate a session ID using the Movie Database API. By generating a session ID, we will be allowed to make API calls related to the user's account. So all of the API calls that you see here we will be allowed to make for the user. And the reason you might want to do this is if you're creating an app and you want to access the user's data, such as their list of favorite movies or TV shows, then you would have to generate a session ID in order to do so. To get started, the first thing we need to do is to create a request token. So if we're looking at this documentation, we can just click this link here. Once you're on this page, we can just click the copy button here and import this request into Postman. Switching over to Postman, I can just create a new request and just paste in what we just copied. The only change we need to make is to add our API key as a query parameter. If you don't have your own movie database API key, I have another video on my channel that shows you the exact step-by-step -step process of how to generate your own key. Once you have that, we can and just add as a query parameter. So here in the key, just type in API underscore key. In the value, just paste in your API key. So if your API key was one, two, three, you would just paste it in here. I'm going to use a variable, but just make sure to paste in whatever your API key value is inside this section. Now we can hit send to make the request. This is what the response should look like. Going back to the documentation, the next step is to go to this link here. So we can just copy it and paste it in. In this section where it says request token, just copy the value that we got back from the API call and just make sure to replace it just like this and hit enter. You should now see this screen where we can approve or deny the request. So in this case, I'll just hit approve. If everything worked correctly, you should now see this page. Looking back at the documentation, the last thing we need to do is to create a session ID. And we can do that by clicking create session and then importing the API call just like we did earlier. Switching back to Postman, I will create a new request and just paste in the API call that we just copied. There are two changes we need to make. The first change is to add our API key. So just like before, just type in API underscore key. And then for the value, just paste in your API key. I'll just use the variable again in this case. The other change we need to make is to send a payload as part of this post request. So click body, raw, and make sure this says JSON. For the payload, just type in exactly what I have here. So the key will be request token. And then the request token value will be whatever request token that we got back in the previous API call. Now we can hit send to make the actual API call. Looking at the response, if everything worked correctly, then you should now see a session ID. Going back to the documentation, we can now make any of the API calls under the account section. So for example, if we want to get a list of the user's favorite TV shows, we can click here, copy the request, open Postman, import the call that we just copied. There are two changes we need to make. The first one is to add our API key, just like we've done before. For the second change, we need to add the session ID as a query parameter. For the key, type in session underscore ID. And then for the value, just copy and paste the value that we got back from the previous API call. Looking at the previous API call that we made, here we got the session ID. So for this value, just copy it and then paste it here. I have mine stored in a variable, so I'll just paste it like this. Once you have made both those changes, we can now hit send to make the API call. Looking at the response, we can now see a list of TV shows that the user has favorited. Going back to the documentation, if you want to make any of these API calls under the account section, you can use the exact approach I just showed you and everything should work as expected. That is the end of this tutorial. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, please like the video and don't forget to subscribe for more content.